Hello, hello, and welcome to this VEX tutorial. As some of you might know, I like doing what I call meditational programming, from which I sometimes make GIFs. And yesterday, I saw a video of pendulum drawing its own path, thus creating very intricate patterns. And <laughs> of course, I couldn't resist and make one myself. And the result was so amazing that I just wanted to share it with you guys. I mean, just look at some of these shapes and the way they twist. I mean, it's absolutely mesmerizing to me how simple the algorithm actually is because, wait for it, <laughs> it is just the sinus functions, nothing else. Are you mind blown yet? So how does it work? Let's first dive into a quick theory explanation. So let's start with something simple and familiar. <laughs> so imagine this is our XY coordinate grid and as you know, probably know, <laughs> that if you have linear movement, it will look something like this. And dependent on your relation between um, x and y, the graph may look more like this or more like this, but the correlation will always stay the same. But now, imagine if we replace this linear movement, so linear movement across x and linear movement across y, with two sinus functions. And for the sake of the example, let's imagine that they go from uh, zero to one in this case. So it is, they do not go into negative because it will be easier for me to draw. Uh, so let's try to understand what will happen then. So at first we also start at zero and then we see both spikes at y and x. So uh, we start slowly. So we move very slowly and then we accumulate more and more and more and more and more. And then we slow down again and we slow down again, and then we go faster, 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 and slow down again. But as you can see, we're still plotting just a straight line, and you might ask me, well, that's, that's nothing interesting, is it? Well, the interesting part comes when you apply offset to y and offset to x. So suddenly, they're not in harmony anymore. And what that would mean. It would be a bit hard for me to draw, but I will show it to you in Houdini as I made a quick uh, visualization. So here, start at zero time. This is our start of our coordinate. Let me actually show the uh, beginning of the grid. Should be in, hmm, in the guides, yes. Uh, origin, yes, there it is. So that is the origin of our grid. And now if we start going and we have uh, just different frequencies, we don't even have any offset, but we have different frequencies, suddenly you have this. And here in this case, I am going uh, in both positive and negative direction. But look what you start getting. Look at this beauty. Just, oh my God, and it's evolving and it's growing. And look how just gorgeous it is. And by the way, uh, it changes the scale because I made the multiplier because when I was looking at pendulum examples, the motion kind of uh, goes down with time. And I also wanted to implement it. So that's, there it is here. So if we do not have that, so let's go to time zero and we just have everything just time multiplied by one. So it's always constant. We will just keep plotting this which is also quite nice. <laughs> so that is kind of the intuition behind the pendulum. And now let's implement it. So let's start by putting a geometry node. Diving inside, we don't need the file, but we would need a wrangle where all the magic will be happening. So um, let's call it uh, init xy because we're going to work with x and y coordinates or x and z coordinates in this case. So we want to put it on detail only once because we, don't, we won't have any points or primitives to run uh, to process. And so let's start coding. So we would want to do it a certain amount of times, meaning we would need such variables as time. So let's initiate the time. We're going to make it a user controlled parameter. So time as well as you want to know the time step. So let's go uh, create that one as well. So time step, and it's also going to be a user control parameter. So time step. And now we can create our loop. So we're going to say while total time, or actually let's rename those. Let's rename this to maximum time. So it's going to be a bit 
better con uh, naming convention and we're gonna say while well, time is smaller than maximum time which means we also need the timer itself so the maximum time will be responsible of the total amount of time we're going to keep uh, uh, creating the points and the time itself is like like a timer like this is like a slider <laughs> that is uh, going to slide across our timeline so it's going to be zero and in the loop itself every time we're going to increment this time variable by time step. So that is done and set up. Now we can proceed to creating our x and y and I'm just going to call them x and uh, y. And since we're going to initiate them a lot of times actually I'm going to put them outside of the loop so they don't keep being reinitialized. And we can proceed now to uh, implementing those. So assigning them a value. And x is going to be a sinus of time as well as y will be a sinus of time. However, if we do that, we will just get a straight line as I illustrated earlier. So what we want is we want different offsets and and different, not just offsets, but different also frequencies. And we're gonna control that with another user parameter, which is going to be float um, frequency a, and then we're gonna call it uh, frequency a and we can create also frequency B. And again, for the better naming convention, I'll actually put it frequency X and Y. I think it would be slightly more explicit. So we're gonna create a new channel, also gonna be frequency Y. And I forgot, uh, yep, so now it's all fine. And now we can multiply the time by the corresponding frequencies. I actually found out that it doesn't matter that much if you have the same offset for both of them because you just want to cycle through the sinus functions to see what different shapes you get. So in that sense, I think it's absolutely fine if you have only single offset, which we're also going to put in the channel to control for the user. So we're going to create an offset. Going to copy the offset and I'm just going to plus offset here and here. And we also want to offset both of them a bit and in that sense actually might be it is a good idea but I think it would be okay if we just put frequency y here as well because we want them to be slightly offset with each other and I think it's okay if we just put a frequency y so we don't clutter our user uh, interface with too many parameters. So that setup is done and now we can just add the point so we're going to add point we're going to add it to ourselves so input number zero and we're going to add it to a new coordinate which we're going to set because it's a new vector we're going to create it from two floats which is x and y so the first will be x we are working with x and z in Houdini so that's why we're going to put zero in the second uh, index of our vector and then we put uh, y and that is it <laughs> that is literally it so let's apply in a set see if I forgot anything which might happen uh, so first of all let's create a small tiny step uh, we're going to create two frequencies we're not going to offset anything and let's scroll through time and yes, we are getting what I am expecting to get. If you have the same harmonious frequencies, you will get this nice ellipse. So now it is a fun time. Now we want to see what different shapes we get. So I think if we just offset it just slightly, slightly, as you can see, we're already getting something more interesting. And let me keep scrolling through time. So yes, beautiful, beautiful. And uh, let's keep scrolling actually. And as you can see, if you keep scrolling through the frequencies, you can get different shapes. And you might also get through offset. And they keep just actually just dancing with you. So um, now we want to also add this uh, extinguishing motion, so to say, when uh, with time, the strength of the pendulum, if this was a pendulum, uh, kind of goes down. And we will do it with a... Uh, RAM parameter. So it's going to be, first of all, it's going to be a time multiplier and we're going to create another uh, float here, which we're going to call time uh, multiplier. So we can just initialize it together with x and y because we are going to assign it a value inside the loop because with every loop iteration it will, it will be a slightly different uh, number. So time multiplier is, and the time multiplier is dependent on time. So let's just fit the whole time multiplier to go from its original time and we know that it will always go from zero to max time so we can say that its original range is from zero to max time but we want to go from zero to one because it's this number is much easier to control <laughs> and now this time multiplier 
we can multiply with both of our x and y coordinates. But we don't just want the time multiplier itself to go from 0 to 1, and actually let's reverse that because when the time just starts, so when our time is 0, we want the full motion, so we want the full strength of it, so we're going to put 1 here and 0. And to make it more um, art directable, <laughs> we're going to put a ramp parameter, which will go uh, strength, and it will be controlled by our time multiplier. And we're going to multiply both x and y with that. So apply and accept. Nothing will change uh, now because we don't have the ramp itself. But now, as you can see, so let's put it back to 1, we can see that our motion dies out with time. And it is a very cool concept because now you can get this type of shapes. And that is actually <laughs> pretty much it. The last kind of finishing touches that you might want to do is just create the line, which is very simple by creating add and saying that you want to create a line by group, so all the points are now connected with the line. And another thing you might want to do is just to see which lines are, or points are newer, so they have less kind of say age or time they existed, you might want to create a kind of a coloring. And we'll just plot another wrangle here, which you call coloring. And it's going to be very simple. We just want to say that the color is fit our current point number because the older points will have smaller number. So we will say that it goes from 0 to numpc, the total number of points in the current uh, node, minus 1. And we will go uh, say that we want to go from 0 to 1 because we want the older points to be um, darker. And again, if you want it to be more art controlled, we can just say that our color is channel ramp, we're going to call it color, and it's not actually color, it's a luminosity, hope I spelled it correctly, I don't think so, but it <laughs> doesn't matter, and we will just say resample the color, and only the red channel, because all the channels will be assigned the same value, so it doesn't matter. So we'll apply accept, uh, create this ramp parameter, and now as you can see, all their points now get a gray, and new points are white. And to make it a bit better visible, let's actually make our lines thicker, if I remember where to do that. Yeah, wire within geometry. So yes. And by the way, if you want this tab to be visible, it's D. So I press D and I get this. And if you want to expand your um, vex expression of expression, <laughs> is Alt E. So. That is it. <laughs> that is the whole tutorial, and now I will share with you some awesome values that I found that work really beautifully. And the first one would be 3.1 and 3. And as you can see, if you keep offsetting it, 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 it looks beautiful, but the trick here is to change the time. And as you can probably already recognize, this is my GIF, the initial GIF, so let's actually hide the grid. Let's hide the origin as well. So you get this very beautiful layering and also you can control the strength so you can say that it's kind of goes in the steps and you can for example not do any coloring and you get this interesting shape and so on and so forth. It just looks so beautiful. So let's keep going. So another absolute beauty is, so let's delete this point, is 6.1 Ooh, wow, this one is actually very beautiful as well. Oh my god, this one is gorgeous. And we still have the coloring. Oh, that's so beautiful. So it's 3.1 and 6.1. But the one I wanted to show you is 12. And I think it also needs very specific um, strength multipliers. So I made this one actually smaller. And it's for it's actually not 0 0.1, but 0 0.2. And if we keep cycling through the offset, we get this. Just look how beautiful it is. I will actually make my time step maybe a bit... Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Don't touch that. I'll make my time actually smaller. So we have less of the lines. But look at that. Oh, just look at that. Oh my god, so beautiful. So beautiful. And uh, the last one I want to share with you is... If you actually put minus 5.1 here, and here you put 5... And now if you go through offset, <laughs> look what you get. Oh my god, just so, so beautiful. 
so so beautiful so yes that is it for this tutorial i hope it was useful for you i hope you have a lot of fun if you find another interesting shapes please share them with me and yes thank you very much for watching and i wish you an awesome day <laughs> bye bye